Shalom. This is your host, Pastor Enoch Piri. Welcome to The Journey, a program where we profile prominent members of our society who have made it to the top against all odds. By the way, they have done it by the help of the Holy Spirit. Today, I'll be speaking to Sister Nambita Pumluana. Welcome to the program, ma'am. Thank you so much. You know, you know, the Bible speaks about great men like Abraham who had to start their journey from Haram and eventually they conquered and occupied Canaan. And I believe that uh, behind every story there is a journey. How did this great life start? Well, it didn't start in Haram. <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> of course, yeah. I was born in the Eastern Cape in okay. Tat. Mm. Grew up in a farm. Mm. Uh, herding cattle. <laughs> Is it? Yep, chasing chickens. Okay. Fetching eggs in the morning. Wow. <laughs> wow. Um, but I had a very wholesome, you know, beginning. Mm -hmm. I was raised by um, a priest. Oh, beautiful. So yes. you're a PK. I'm a PK. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I'm a, like with, with all the bells and whistles yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and all the stereotypes yeah, yeah. all in there. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think one of the most. Um, one of the hallmarks, I would say, of being a PK is that you're raised in a, in a loving environment. Mm -hmm. um, it's a really, really good um, foundation because you're taught to love yourself. Mm. And you're taught that um, there is no way in the world you can go where you will not find love. Mm -hmm. And it makes us a bit of a problem when we in, <laughs> in the society because mm -hmm. you're not seeking approval, you're not seeking um, affirmation from external sources mm -hmm. because you've already been given all those tools and I think that's you know one of the beautiful things about being raised in a Christian family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow and uh, you did your primary school in uh, Mtat as well? I did I started there um, okay. being a PK you you know go all over the country uh, so yeah. I yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. so I I'm I attended many different schools, wow. but mo all of them were in the Eastern Cape okay. um, because okay. my grandfather's diocese was, you know, within the Eastern Cape oh, region. Okay. And your high school? <clears throat> in Canada. Oh, you went to Canada? Yeah. Beautiful. That, w that was a great experience, I suppose. I suppose you could say that. How, how did it come about? I was in exile. Okay. Mm. Fighting <laughs> for the liberation. Absolutely. That, that's uh, beautiful. Now, before we speak about this, uh, side of a might woman of war what inspired you i know there was a problem in south africa did you just call me a woman of war yes ma'am yes, okay. ma <laughs> a might woman of might war woman. not just any woman of war. Nah, nah. i'm just feeling my muscles absolutely, growing right now absolutely well, what inspired you i can imagine you were young then right what really inspired you what made you decide to go in exile I think Christianity and activism um, mm. not separate Absolutely. in any way. I mean, Christ mm. was an activist. Absolutely. There's no way that you can um, be a, a, a Christian and love God and love people mm -hmm. and not fight for, for justice. There's just no mm. way you, mm. that, you, know, you can separate the two. So being raised in a Christian family and an actively Christian family, mm -hmm. there was no way that we could not, and all of my uncles and aunts, uh, all of us, uh, some of us went, well, my aunt, and my one aunt and uncle mm -hmm. stayed in the country. My one uncle and my mother left the country. Mm -hmm. And those were the four kids. Mm -hmm. So there's no way that you cannot be part of it. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I mean, I was chanting slogans before I could, could really speak properly. Wow. So <laughs> I came by mm -hmm. it honestly. I don't think I chose it. I think it chose me mm -hmm. as much as being a cultural activist. This was my way of doing mm -hmm. what ne needed to be done. Mm -hmm. um, and I did it on stage. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. You, you've uh, made a very important uh, point that uh, you cannot separate Christianity from uh, being an activist. Absolutely. Because if, if you're a pastor, you, 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 you are you are actually an activist in a way, in one way or the other. Absolutely, you know, absolutely, and, yeah. And, uh, and uh, at what age did um, you have uh, a personal encounter with God? I don't think there was a time that I didn't have a personal encounter with God. Okay, okay, okay. Um, it was, even my name <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> it means, yeah. you know, pray zealously. So Absolutely. there's no there's no time in my life that I didn't. Mm -hmm. I think it was being a pastor's kid, you 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 can either be that 
mm. a child of that family mm. or you can rebel against it and none mm. of us have ever rebelled against mm. it mm. so mm. we grew up knowing God we grew up having a, a practical relationship mm. with mm. God we grew up I mean um, by the age of eight you need to be able to lead uh, evening prayer mm. That means studying the Bible, that means studying the prayer book and knowing mm. those prayers and knowing the intent of those prayers. So there's no time in my life when I could say, oh, and then on that day, <laughs> mm, mm. I met God in the bathroom. <laughs> mm, 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 mm. But I will say this, that there are times throughout your life mm, mm. that you have a closer relationship Absolutely. with God than other times. Yes. You know, um, I, there is no teenager that will say that they've got a very close relationship mm, with God mm, 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 mm. until they get into a car accident. <laughs> then okay, you remember. Okay, <laughs> okay, okay. So mm, mm. I think it's more of a journey Mm -hmm. Speaking of which, um, mm -hmm. in and out of that relationship, really, mm -hmm. rather than a meeting mm -hmm. of, of, you know, or starting a relationship. Okay. In your journey, let's talk about your, <coughs> your, your, your time in Canada. Is there a specific uh, uh, time where you've got these uh, memories and you would love to share them to somebody? Any encounters, politically, people, and, uh, of course, uh, Christ? I think what you need to understand from the get-go is that uh, being raised all over the country, being mm -hmm. raised all over the province, and, and um, you know, you drive thro through the night and wake up the next day um, in a village that you've never encountered with people that you don't know. Mm -hmm. You learn to adapt to certain situations, and mm -hmm. you, learn to mm -hmm. you learn to be yourself no matter where you are. Mm -hmm. Mama always said, wherever you go, there you are. Absolutely. And you know, okay. <laughs> that's a good one. Yeah, yeah. Well, that means wh 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 wherever you go, you really need to remember yourself. Mm. You need to be, you, you cannot change just because your circumstances have changed. Mm, mm, but mm. Uh, your attitude needs to be adjusted to those circumstances. Mm, so mm. it never was a problem being in, in new environments. Mm, it, mm. It, it took time to to adjust sometimes, some, sometimes more, you know, more time and more energy than mm. it did. Moving to Canada was an incredible experience mm. because I was told it's white there, and, <laughs> and it, it was. From South Africa. Yeah, I can <laughs> it imagine. was very white. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I landed in, in in February, and I was living in Lesotho at the time. Okay. I landed in February, and for, it was white. The roads were white because okay. <laughs> yeah, of snow. Yeah, 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 so yeah. I'm like, so they meant white. <laughs> okay. You know, so it wasn't so much being immersed in an environment of white people, but it was being. It was freezing cold. I'd never e imagined that it could ever be that cold. Mm. But bear in mind again, by the time I w moved to Canada, I'd been living in Lesotho for two years. Yeah. There I discovered that there were black people that did not speak Kosa. Mm. Mm. Again, there you go, you're finding yourself in an environment where, heavens, what? <laughs> oh, <laughs> so you had to learn Kosa? I mean, no, Lesotho. I had to, it took me three months. I was fluent in three months. Wow. wow. Because again, wherever you go, there you are. Mm. Mm. So you 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 brought into you taken into this um, into these circumstances into these environments, and you need to remember yourself. Now I was in an Anglican school, so at least there was that one part of myself that mm. was in continuity with me. Mm, mm, mm. You know, the prayers were the same. Mm. Um, it, it, it was a boarding school, but it was an Anglican boarding school, okay. and I was raised Anglican. So mm, mm, again, mm. I I could commune with them, and we had that in common. You see what I'm saying? Mm. So it made life a little bit more bearable. Mm. But by the time you move to Canada again, you're thinking, now what? Mm. Um, there's a story that my grandmother used to tell about this light that's always wanting to praise God. Mm. And you know, you're amongst all these different lights and you're feeling like you're not being enough mm. and you're not mm. grateful enough. Mm. And mm. one day the light finds itself in, in darkness. And all of a sudden, what do we do when you find ourselves in darkness? Mm -hmm. Oh Lord, why have you forsaken me? Mm -hmm. And this is the moment where God says, you're a light, mm. shine. Wow. So wherever you go, there you are. That's, that's a powerful principle. You see? Mm. So if you, if, you, if, you drive, if you use that as the driving uh, principle, even when you forget who you are, even when you get upset about being in a taxi for too long, mm -hmm. <laughs> wherever mm. you go, there you are. Mm then you must just, you know, work at remembering yourself. Mm. Mm. If you're a light, just go ahead and shine. Wow. It will not be dark. Wow. 
you, you, you are one of the best uh, actresses uh, this country has uh, produced. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, how, how did this come about? Did you have this dream from um, Mtata? Or, or how did it uh, emanate within you? I must say I never, dream, I never dreamt it. It was never a dream. Mm. I watched a play, I think I was about four years old, and it was a Gibson Cantor play. And I remember s standing, because, I mean, I couldn't sit, it was so short. Like right there, yeah, my eyes yeah. were like right there on front of the stage. And I felt the power of the people that were on stage mm. and what they poured onto me as I sat in the audience. Mm. And I didn't see it as, oh, I gotta do that. I gotta be, an, I gotta be on stage. As much as whatever it is that they've just done to me, that's what I want to do. Mm. And it's that communicating and it's that communing that has always driven me. And it's that, so I, I don't act words, I tell stories. Mm. Do you feel yeah, the yeah, difference? Yeah, yeah. When you're on the pulpit, you're not reciting the Bible. Mm, mm. You're communing with the... Absolutely. And you know when you're connecting with them, yeah, and you know absolutely. when you're not. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah. you know when yeah. it's happening, and you know when it's yeah. not. It's the same for us. Wow. Wow. It's the same for... So um, I knew that um, this is what I wanted to feel, and this is what I wanted to do. I just didn't know that there was a career in it. Wow. So it took me a long time to figure that out. Mm. Um, I went to school for it. I studied all the different things that would, you know, con you know, converge to making this a, a career. Wow. So your psychology, your like your your you know theater school, mm. and did all of that until I felt ready. Wow. And then I went professional. Powerful. Uh, we're gonna take a music break, and uh, when we come <laughs> back, ladies and gentlemen, more about the journey of Nambita, stay tuned. Uh, thank you very much. I'm in conversation with uh, Nambita, discussing her journey and how she realized it and how God used her to execute it successfully. Uh, my, my sister, uh, you, you, you studied for, for the things that you do. Many people, right. they just <coughs> go into it without um, studying. How silly is that? Like, is it silly? It's what, I can just watch LA Law and then go and defend you in court? Yeah. yeah, <laughs> yeah. Or just watch Grey's Anatomy for a couple of months and then go and cut you up yeah. in the <laughs> operating room. I think it's yeah. very disrespectful yeah. of people to think wow. that wow. that Powerful. they can just go and do what I wow. do when I had to go to school to be, to be mm. able to do it. Mm. Even when you've got an amazing singing voice, you need to go and learn the techniques. Mm. You need mm. to have, a, a, you know, your toolbox might, needs to be full. Absolutely. And I think it's very, very disrespectful of people mm. to think that just because you, I make it look easy, it doesn't mean that Absolutely. you That's need powerful. to disrespect it. It doesn't mean that you, you, you know, you, you, you should not mm. learn mm. what it's about. Mm. It doesn't mean that you should not respect the craft. Mm. Mm. And, you know, uh, and I've also heard people, especially in the social media, saying, oh, give other people a chance. How, how, how long have you had your doctor? Why don't you give other doctors wow, a chance? Wow, wow. It's a profession. It's a career. Mm, mm, Somebody mm. went to school for this, and this is how I feed my family. Mm, mm. So for you to then disrespect it like that, it kind of ends the conversation. Absolutely. Yeah, mm. I, I, I hear you. I hear you. You know, so, so uh, when did you have the, your first break into the media space? Of course, I believe that God has been preparing you behind the scene. I think you need to um, see it a little bit differently. Okay. Um, when, when did I go professional? Absolutely. That's really what we need to discuss. Okay. Because I never intended to be popular. It's not about being famous. It's, it's about being immersed in your craft, doing what you do. Mm. It's about studying the Bible and preaching. Absolutely. It's not doing it on TV. Absolutely. It's just doing it. Absolutely. That somebody then take the time to capture it mm -hmm. and spread it to even more people than mm -hmm. were in the room when you had when you were doing it. Mm -hmm. That's the that's the blessing. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. the original blessing is being able to do it. Period. Wow. Wow. Do you understand? That's it. So now people who are you know the people that you're talking about who just want to mm -hmm. get out there and do it um, are looking for the fame of it. Mm. The true craft, craftsmen, the th true actors, are not looking for that fame. They're looking for the craft. They're looking to be on stage. They're looking to explore the character. Mm. They're looking to tell the story in many different forms and different people's stories. Mm -hmm. That's where the craft is. Mm. 
Mm. So, so, so maybe, maybe let me paraphrase my 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 statement. Like, uh, you are one of the successful actors in this country. Thank you. How did it come about for that day when you just had a break? Because there are many people that study drama, mm. yes, and uh, they are still in the shadow. Right. <clears throat> uh, uh, maybe they don't get enough opportunities to, 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 to perform. I don't know the art behind it. There's a lot of that. Okay. I was trained in such a way that I was taught to, to run it as a business. Okay. It upsets a lot mm. of people, and I'm going to tell you why. Mm. Because I found, for example, in, in South Africa, mm -mm. actors and artists are treated as um, a commodity in one aspect mm -hmm. that I should be grateful to you that you've allowed me to be mm -hmm. on stage mm -hmm. yet it's a business transaction mm -hmm. I treat it as a business mm -hmm. I'm not grateful to you for the opportunity I'm grateful to you that you were you found it um, necessary to do business with me mm -hmm. I bring my end of my business you bring your end of your business mm -hmm. it's a business that's how I was trained mm -hmm. so when I walk onto set I bring my business onto your business Wow that it's an emotional uh, there's a greatly emotional aspect of my business mm, mm, mm. is for me that's my side of the of the business Absolutely. yes yeah. now yeah. when you're talking about when did the big break come or yeah. when did you that whole exposure yeah. yeah yeah i think i was just really really truly blessed with not just the the talent and the artistry but also the head for the business okay okay um and also then to acknowledge when it's a learning space and when it's a shining space. I have also been blessed with leading roles mm. from the beginning of my career. Mm. Um, I think that has helped me a lot. Okay. So I remember, for example, uh, being at the Young People's Theatre on stage in Toronto, which mm -hmm. is one of the best stages ever. Mm. And my first experience there was in a leading role. Wow. So again, when God puts that to you and you grab it and you treat it like a business as opposed to, oh my gosh, I'm just, uh, I'm going to be famous. Mm. Then mm. you just not. Wow. Wow. Do you remember the story of the, mm. of the, the sons who were given the coins? What yes. do you do with Talents, the seed? Yes. What do you do with the seed? Mm. Do you bury it and it germinates? Do you hide it somewhere so that, you know, when, when the master comes back, mm. <laughs> you mm. still have those five, mm. five, five pence. Mm. Mm. What do you do with it? Mm. And, also, does it rain after you put the seed in the ground? Mm. There's so many facets, you know, and mm. not all of us are meant to be famous. Some of us are meant to just Absolutely. hold up the pedestal. Wow, powerful, powerful. You know, you know, as you speak, I'm actually reminded of the need which our society need to be equipped, especially uh, even us as speakers, you know, I'm a pastor, but also at the same time I'm a speaker. You must look at this one aspect as, as business and right. learn how to execute it successfully. Right. Yeah. Be, it's important. You know, because... How many times have you been told, you know, or have you been expected to be poor mm. because you're serving, you're serving God? What? Mm, mm, what, mm. what he, he put he taught me about money so that I can be poor mm, mm, do you mm. understand oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, but you need to be unapologetic about wanting that fancy car to be comfortable when you travel to all those places you need to be comfortable and unapologetic about enjoying God's blessings in your life mm, mm. you need to learn that and that's not something that comes easily especially mm. when you're coming from a serving family absolutely you know because also you know, there is this uh, notion from the public, especially when you're a pastor and you're successful, it's like you owe an apology to the community. Absolutely. Why are you driving a, a big car? Why you are you staying in a posh neighborhood? Because we're a man of God, we are supposed to be where the poor are. <laughs> you, have you, how many times have you heard about the poor artist? Uh, yeah. The poor, <laughs> you know, and then uh, you read in the papers on Sunday mm -hmm. how they, you know, how they talk about, oh look, Nambita is, is poor, mm -hmm. Nambita is, is mm -hmm. starving, mm -hmm. and then when you're not, oh my goodness, how did she come about that? Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. people will talk. Give them something good to talk about. Wow, wow. So, so in your journey, has there been a time where you feel like, you know what, I think I can't do this anymore? Every day. Wow. Keep in mind, when I wake up in the morning, every day of my life, mm. I'm looking for a job. Every day of my, of my life, I'm in a job interview. Mm. Every encounter that I have with whomever, that is a job interview, that's an audition. Every day of my life. Mm. And when I walk into that audition, I'm too tall, I'm too short, 
I'm too fat, I'm too skinny, I'm too light, I'm too dark. Mm. Every day, everything that would lend me into a, a, into a working position is subjective. There is nothing I can do about it. Wow. My hair is too long, my hair is too short. Um, I can wear a wig, I cannot wear a wig. Everything about me is subjectively judged and there's nothing I can do about that. Wow. I'm not in control of what you think of me. I need to just surrender myself to that notion. Wow. I need to then just be comfortable about it. That's where you, you learn to, it's okay. I, it doesn't matter what you think of me. It really doesn't. Mm, mm. I, can, I have no control over it. Mm. Are you getting this? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. I have wow. no control of what you think of me. Mm. So I'm not going to put too much stock in what you think of me. Mm. I, can't, I can't do anything about it. Wow, wow. And, uh, and uh, what keeps you going? My son. Mm. My son, I think for me, in, is... It used to be my grandmother who raised me. Okay. Um, she had this finger that she would... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and if that finger has to move, you're in serious trouble. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and the finger would just point wow, at you. Wow, wow. And um, my son now knows the finger because I've okay, tra okay, translated okay, it to him. Okay. Mm -hmm. But um, my son, for me, I think it's is God's example, daily example of his blessing into my life. Mm -hmm. Without him, he's my reason. I get up in the morning and I have to feed him. I get up every morning and I have to clothe him. So my interaction with you is in, in a business transaction, at the back of my mind, I'm thinking, I've got to feed that child. Not I've got to please you, mm. but I've got to feed that child. You're secondary in this transaction. Mm. And if you come with the same notion that I'm secondary in this transaction, I don't owe you, you don't owe me. Mm. We're doing business. It makes life so much easier for both of us because in reality, when I am sitting at two o'clock in the morning in my bathroom, trying to account to myself and to my God, mm. I'm not thinking about you. Wow. I'm thinking about my failings mm. and my successes. Mm. So when I'm dealing with you, I have to keep that in mind. Mm. Mm. Is that making sense? Mm, so much sense. So <laughs> much sense. Wow. Yeah. You are... So he's my reason. He's, he's the reason I get up in the morning. And, and sometimes he's the one who shakes me and wakes me up in the morning and goes, come on, you got to get going. Wow. And I don't think he even knows the, the power of him waking me up in the morning, what that does. I, I, I can't go back to sleep. Because mm. I'm thinking, oh, cracky. Okay, yeah. No, I gotta go make bread for you. <laughs> wow, wow. Mm. No, my sister, thank you very much. It was a blessing having you uh, on our show today. And uh, we'll be continuing the conversation next week. <laughs> and uh, I believe that uh, our viewers have been blessed because I know that uh, God has uh, something special for you. My favorite scripture is uh, Jeremiah 29, verse 11. For I know the plans I have for you. And, uh, and uh, my, my motto in life, I look at people who have made it. And, uh, and I look up to them. And I admire them. And I pray, Father, give me grace for me to reach my destiny. Thank you very much for watching. God bless you. Till we meet next week. <laughs>